Ask yourself this, everyone. Just how difficult would it be to use some silly starfish in a potential bird farm? Now that's a question we in the Discord ask a week or so, and our friend Jake Pang 99 brought up just how difficult a potential setup could actually be. The thing is, however, it's actually not that hard at all. In fact, I first learned how to utilize an enemies to my advantage in this regard almost two years ago after coming across this video by Mr. Dream here, in which they attempted to influence the spawning habits of birds through strategically placing an enemies within a farming pen. It was very rudimentary, and that's because it was the first of its kind. But with Jake reminding me of it, and thus me reminding myself that I promised you guys more anemone content in our anemone guide that I'd never ended up giving you, I am happy to say that we're here today to finally learn how to conquer the air via the sea. So let's get to it. But in order to fully understand what you'll be seeing in these farm examples to come, you should probably know how and why they actually work first, yes? Yes, and it's quite simple actually. A use of a Birds of the World book by Wickerbottom and or Maxwell looks to spawn 20 to 30 birds randomly around us in a general circle. And there's a cap on how many birds can spawn, so be aware of that. But toss on a feather hat, and each use of the book will trend towards calling down larger groups of birds more consistently, which could benefit you, but just note, it's completely optional. But either way, birds are just being called down in the circle around us, yes? Yes. But what happens when we look to quote-unquote block the space with an enemies? Well, exactly that. We literally prevent the game from spawning any rats with wings in these areas, and suddenly these 20 to 30 birds become much more concentrated in areas that remain open, of course. So let that lead you to blocking all but one side of this circle of yours, and suddenly, every bird is landing all together, all in one location. And, ah, uh, I hope you see where we're going with this. As that's it, folks. That's the basic concept of using an enemies to focus bird farms. Mess with the layout even more, and you can truly contain all bird spawns to a pretty darn tight corner, and this is where the fun begins. But please do me a favor and bear in mind that what you are going to see from here on out is not the be-all end-all. You can make these farms as small and simple as possible, or plan ahead towards some intermediate Krampus fire farms combined within your already complicated bird farm for Pete's sake. Whatever the case may be, the idea is the exact same. Pick a spot anywhere in the world, block spawns with an enemies, call down the rats with wings, put them to sleep potentially, kill as many as you possibly can as quickly as you can, potentially trap cramp eye, and repeat to your heart's desire of course. Bird farms have never been hard, and this one here is essentially every basic bird farm in existence anyways, only all the birds are just landing in one place and not all around you, so don't overthink it. Does yours need to be as big? Absolutely not. Does yours need to plan for Krampus? No, not at all. Just let him run into the walls and then kill him individually. Does yours need to use Sleepy Time Stories to accomplish what you're after? No. This here is but a quickly put together example, everyone. Play your way. But if this particular farm has caught your eye, then here's why the side pens are laid out as they are. Statues are impassable to most mobs in this game. However, the game still considers them to not be. Therefore, mobs believe they have a path to whatever bait awaits them still. So set up a couple death pens to lure crap by into them, and then whenever you have finished up farming the birds, simply lock the evil Santa helpers in and watch them burn. Do things have to be as complicated as they are by literally having to make miniature fire farms within a farm? No. One could, again, just bait and kill them individually by hand at the end of the day. Again, people. My word ain't gospel. In fact, feel free to outright ignore everything I say and do when it comes to your own farming methods, as every one, every situation is different, of course. But with that, I would just like to bring up the possibility of foregoing the use of two books each cycle and just getting it down to one, the birds of the world. There are a couple ways to do this, of course, with one being light years better than the other in my opinion, but you will need to ask yourself this. Do you want your farms to lead to Krampi as well as bird loot, or is the latter all that matters? If it is the first thing, then I suppose a good old-fashioned smoldering setup could be in order, as the Flingos will of course freeze the birds in place instead of you having to put them to sleep each and every time. However, these setups have always been pretty costly. 
lots of flingos that needed to make them efficient enough to actually be worth it, on top of all the other nonsense that comes from consistently burning resources with the use of a star caller staff a dwarf star. It is a fine method. It is definitely workable. It's just not my choice nowadays. Not when Winona's catapults exist. Folks, welcome to, by far, the best bird farm in the game, and it's not even close. It also begins with Bonking Glamour right in the noggin to get things started, which is an added bonus. What the heck are you even on about, Beard? Well, if we combine the fact that Winona's catapults do not hurt the likes of Glamour, Chester, and even a couple select structures like Houndia Shootius, with the facts that we've learned about anemones as well as their influence on bird spawns here today, we can create the ultimate quote-unquote automatic bird farm out there. Heck, it doesn't even need to be as big as what you see here either, nor are these many anemones actually warranted. But I just prefer to be sure, if you know what I mean. But time your readings by calling down waves as the catapult is flinging, and your efficiency is going to be off the flipping charts, and piles upon piles of bird loot is going to be yours. Oh, and if you want different birds to farm, of course, be sure to adjust your seasonal farming habits, as well as any surrounding turf. But folks, that's it. That's farming birds with the help of anemones. Have fun. But since I'm technically calling this a guide, here's a checklist of what you might need. Birds of the World novels are obviously a must, so thank goodness they're so dang easy to make. Depending on how you plan to do things, you might be needing some sleepy time stories as well, though a pan flute slash deconstruction staff method could substitute. You will have to eventually reach the Lunar Islands, of course, as they're the only places and enemies can be found and thus dug up. However, may I suggest actually building a burn farm there too to forego any issues with sanity at the end of the day? You have to understand what turf brings down what birds, and what I mean is that crows before for some turf over others. Red birds will do the same with grassy and forest turfs, all the while blue birds will follow suit, but only in winter, mind you. And finally, canaries need scarecrows in order to replace crow spawns, so be aware of that. And finally, you might need Glamour or a Houndia Shootius for the automatic method with Winona's catapults. As unfortunately, birds are kind of scared of Jester at the end of the day. But good luck, and if you're going for Krampus within these farms, by the way, go for any bird that isn't a crow. But there you have it, everyone. A pseudo-guide type thing on how to utilize an enemies to your advantage when it comes to farming birds specifically, influenced by Mr. Dream here. It's fun stuff. Pretty darn easy, too. So use it to your advantage, and the only thing birds will fear is you. Thanks for watching, folks. Well wishes to all, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.